Okay, we are going to model a bowl, like a cereal bowl, today. So, what we need to do first is to delete this cube. If I hit delete on the keyboard, and press delete, or click it, then go up to the add menu and add a mesh, or shift A is that menu as well. And I'm going to get a sphere. So, with my sphere, uh, as soon as I bring it in, I can change some of the options here, and I can uh, give it more segments, more polygons, by uh, increasing these, or the size, I can make the size bigger. But I'm going to leave that all default and not mess with that right now. Okay. So, uh, once I've got it there, uh, I'm going to go into Edit View. So change it from object to edit. It's right here on the menu. Or just hitting tab on the keyboard does it. Toggles between the two. So I'm going to go into edit mode. It's all selected. So I'm going to deselect it by hitting A on the keyboard. And I'm going to go into wireframe mode, Z, so that I can select it. Because what we're going to do is take the uh, select the top half and delete it. So we can have a bowl on the bottom half, or make a bowl out of the bottom half. Now I'm going to go down here, come down here on my panel down here and select face select and I'm going to change my view with the keypad on the right side num to number one and that gives it a direct front view and it's right at the halfway mark if you didn't move anything or the origin when you brought it in and that way I can select exactly half of it and I can also toggle the, the view uh, from ortho to perspective and that makes it a little bit easier to select as well. So I'm going to hit number 5 on the keypad on the right side to do that. And B to border select. Click and drag just above half of the, the sphere and it selects exactly half of it. Because um, on the faces these little dots, as long as I select those dots, let me show you again, as long as I select just under those dots. If I select over it, it's not going to select those faces, but just under those dots, it will select all those faces. So I'm going to get all half of it, the top half, and hit delete on the keyboard, and I'm going to select faces, and delete all the faces. So right there, now we've got half of the sphere, and it's open, so it looks kind of like a bowl now. If I hit A, I like to bring mine up above the grid, and so, oops, go back to my view and I'll get the translate tool here and just click and drag drag it right above the grid um, I, it kinda acts as a plane even though it's like a table even though it's not really it's just kind of a it's, uh, just a reference that grid is just a reference but I like to have it above it okay I hit Z to bring it out of wireframe mode and I'm gonna go back to my perspective view 5 on the keypad now it looks kind of like a bowl, but it's not a very good bowl because uh, there's no depth to it. So we're going to give it a little depth here. Um, actually, before we do that, uh, I want to... So the bowl is perfectly round on the bottom, which wouldn't be a very good bowl because if we poured some milk into it, it would just tip right over. So a bowl normally has a flat bottom, so I'm going to do that now. So if I go back to my uh, front view, number one, and I'll go back to... Uh, hit number five on the keyboard, ortho view. Select all A and wireframe mode Z. I came out of that a little too fast. Now I'm going to drag this down a little ways so that my third line, second or third line here, is right in line with the x-axis. Uh, that'll make it easy to select it because I'm going to select this bottom part and make it flat. So if I hit A to deselect, B to border select, I'm going to select those first two or three rows of faces here. And I'm going to get my scale tool and scale it down until it's flat. Just like that. Now I've got a flat bottom for my bowl to sit on. Now when I did that, as you notice, it, it kind of stretched out that row of faces right there on the bottom now. And I don't, I mean, it kind of makes a nice little curve here. Uh, I think I'll keep it, but I'm not going to make it quite that big. I don't want it quite that big. So I'm going to get uh, my translate tool again down here. Click and drag up. Um, and I can make it perfectly round again. Or I think I'm going to leave a little bit of that 
stretch into it to give it a little bit of shape, a little bit different shape. Okay, so I've got it all shaped how I want for now. I'm going to select all of it, go back out of wireframe into uh, it's just a solid mode. Now, to give it some depth here, I need to extrude it. So, extrude is over here, region or individual. If you do individual, it's going to do something real crazy. Just like that. So you don't want that. That's not uh, a very good bowl there. So I'm going to undo that. That was extruding individual. It selects and extrudes each individual face um, and does it individually. So I want extrude region, but I'm just going to use the shortcut, which is E on the keyboard. Now when I hit E, I'm just going to click right away. I'm not going to move it at all. Okay. If you move it, it kind of it, it does something funny. You'll see if you try it. Uh, undo it. Hit E and just click right away. It extrudes. So I've got two rows of faces now, or two sets of faces, and one of them is selected. So I'm going to right away scale this and give it some depth. So S on the keyboard, and I'm going to move it out, and that will give it a little depth. Um, I don't want to go too thick with my bowl. I don't want to be too thin either, so you kind of got to find a good balance there, and that looks pretty good. And it extrudes it up a little bit, so I'm going to drag it down so I don't have that big um, curve there. I'll give it a little bit of a slope. Okay, so there's my bowl. It's been extruded. It's got some depth. It's looking more 3D now. That's what we want. Okay, a couple more steps here, and we'll be done. So I'm going to deselect everything A, and I want to select just the top row. So I'm going to go back into wireframe mode, Z. I'm going to hit my one view over on the right keyboard keypad. And I'm going to select by hitting B to border select just the top row of faces. Okay. I'll go back out to wireframe just so you can see what I'm going to do here. And I'm going to subdivide, which we haven't done yet. This button over here on the tools tab. If I subdivide that, it makes twice as many or I don't know, four times as many uh, polygons. And I can subdivide that many times and make just a ton of faces. And of course, I don't want to do that uh, right now, but in some cases we will want to sometimes. So I'm going to go. I'm going to back out. Control Z. Subdivide it once, and I've got kind of an extra row of faces there that I want because I'm going to pull that out a little bit and give this a little bit of a lip. Because it's right here. This is a bowl. Looks like a bowl. If I go into object mode, there's a nice bowl, but it doesn't have a whole lot of shape. I'm going to give it a little more shape. So, I've subdivided. Now, I just want to select the top row on the outside. So, if uh, in wireframe mode, it selects front and back, selects everything that you select. But, if I'm not in wireframe mode, it only selects what's showing. So, for example, if I get my border select and select all of this, it looks like I've selected the whole thing, but look, if I rotate around, see it only gets what was showing. So, it's kind of a it's kind of tricky that way and that's why we go into wireframe mode if I was in wireframe mode and selected the whole thing it would select all the way through everything front and back okay so depending on what you want selected you use wireframe mode or not and in this case we're not going to use wireframe mode let me show you what we're going to do I'm gonna tumble the view just so the lip of the bowl I can all I can't see any of the backside if I can see the backside and I'm trying to select um, oops. B border select and I'm trying to select that top lip look it selects a bunch inside because it was it was showing so I'm gonna make it so I can only see the front part of this on the top and I'm gonna do border select and select all those faces that I can see now it looks like I selected the whole thing but if I tumble around the view I didn't and so I'm gonna go here and do that one more time border select grab the top row, change the view, and do it one more time, and grab the last few. There we go. So sometimes it takes a little work, uh, but as you do this more and more, you'll get more and more used to it, and it'll become uh, a little easier to select things that you want selected.
So I just want that top row on the outside, just like I selected. And I am going to scale it and just hit scale S on the keyboard. And I'm going to bring that out a little ways. That's going to give me a nice little lip on my bowl. And you can decide uh, how far, how much. You can even bring it in like some pottery. Um, I'm going to bring it out about this far, make a little lip on it. And the good thing about extruding is that I, I've only created a small lip, so it's not a huge uh, difference, a huge lip that's coming out on the bowl. It's a small one. And I only selected the outside so that on the inside it didn't come out as well. I want that flat on the inside. Okay, and it's uh, got a little bit of a slope to it. I mean, you can change that however you want. You can select just this inside part and move it, uh, rotate it, and so there's a there's more or less slope. There's a lot of things you can do to it. But I want mine about like this. That looks pretty good. So I'm going to deselect everything. And uh, there's my bowl there. If I go out, hit tab, and go out into object mode, looks a little bit smoother. I can smooth it out like that. And that looks pretty good. I'm going to do it a different way, though. If I do Control-Z, let me show you a different way to smooth that we'll use quite a bit. Over here on this menu over here, we've got all these tabs that do different things. We're going to start learning some of these. So if I click and drag this, I can make it bigger and see all the tabs. Or if I want it, uh, if I want to keep it small, I can put my mouse over those tabs and scroll with the mouse wheel, and it moves those around so that I can get different tabs. And we want to use this wrench here. Uh, the wrench gives us modifiers, and we're going to use some of these modifiers. Learn. A few of them, not all of them, There's because there's a ton. If I click on the menu, there's a lot of modifiers. But we are going to definitely use this subdivision surface. And that's going to subdivide, just like we subdiv uh, subdivided uh, that top row. It's going to subdivide everything and just make tons of polygons. Polygon count's going to go way up here. So if I select it, subdivision surface, when I'm in object mode, and it starts to smooth it out. And right here on my views, uh, I've got a view and a render. The render, when I render it, that's how, well, let me show you what it does first. On the view, I'm going to click maybe three or four, maybe just three on this bowl, and it smooths it out, uh, continues to subdivide the surface area. Okay, so now that smoothed it out pretty well right there. And if I go back into edit mode, you can see that it just uh, increased all my polygons, although um, my polygon count is still there. It looks pretty good. OK, so it smooths it out. You can see it's a little bit. You can see some squares still, and I could smooth it out even, even further. But then it slows down my computer, and it gets all choppy. So I don't want to go too far. And it takes forever to render it also. So I'm just going to go to 3 and my render. So I've got a view and a render. View is what I see right here in my edit. Uh, my window here and render is when I render it it will render that many times so I want it I want them to be the same if I'm if I want to render what I see here but what's nice is that I can turn off the view and bring it back down to what it is originally to edit in but then when I render it it will render three times three subdivisions worth so that's a uh, that's nice Okay, so I've got that modifier on it. it. looks very nice. I can even smooth it out now, and it looks even more smooth. So that's nice. One last thing we're going to do with this is to add a color to it. So I'm going to go up here to Materials, click on it, click a new material, give it a name right here, click on that name, and just say Bowl, hit Enter. And I've got my material, which is here, and that's the color, which is white right now. So my Lambert color, uh, I'm going to now give it a color. So click on that and select whatever color you want. I'm going to select my wife's favorite color, which is robin egg blue. Why? I don't know. And there's my nice little bowl.